We are such a blessed people, Father. You take care of us. You watch over us. You provide for us. Father, you have just, just poured goodness out upon us, Father. And uh, we, you give us wisdom when we need wisdom. You give us knowledge when we need knowledge. You give us answers when we need answers. And, uh, and Father, we thank you for that. We thank you for it today. We bless you. We bless your holy name, Father. We give you the glory. So much glory, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. Let me see if I get this volume right so I don't blow you all out of this house. <laughs> hey, too late? Is that what you said? <laughs> too late. All right. So, so I'm trying to gauge the sound level. It's so different from outside than what's in here. So... I gotta be careful with this thing. So if I walk, if I take this microphone in front of that speaker, it'll squeal, and so you guys are all like, ah. So anyway, all right. Well, praise God. Thank you guys. Thanks for everyone coming. Good to see you all. It's been a while. Amen. Jenny and Carly made it on the same day. <laughs> it's been a while. It's like you would here, then you wouldn't be here, and then you would here, and you wouldn't be here, and. <laughs> Amen. Well, glad to have you guys. Thanks for joining with us. Uh, do you want to, uh, we'll take this time to receive uh, tithes and offerings. We'll pray over your tithes and offerings. That's something that we need to do. Uh, we, it's very important. You know, your tithes and our giving is very important to the Lord. Amen. Because what we give, we're given into his kingdom. We're given it that his will and that his things be done. Amen. And so, uh, and yeah, sure. I, I won't steal your... I won't steal your vibe here. You want a mic? Dad asked me if I would like to do the offering, and I said, I would love to. Okay. Um, <clears throat> offerings are, it was very important to me um, because um, a lot of times I just gave. I didn't know how much to give or where it went or anything like that, and I wanted it to have more meaning because it says in the word back in Malachi 3.10 it says um, bring all the tithes into the storehouse and the storehouse is wherever you go to church and if you don't go to a Bible believing church then send it to a ministry but people that believe in God that believe when they are bringing their hard earned resources money that they've made during the week you want to bring it where the Lord will bless it and you want to bring it to a house that blesses it and will lift it before the Lord so he says in Malachi 3:10, he says bring all the tithes into the storehouse so that there will be enough food in my temple if you do says the Lord of heaven's armies I will open the windows of heaven for you I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. Your crops, and that's, you know, they were an agrarian culture at that time. You know, so that's why that's used the word, your crops. Your crops will be abundant, for I will guard them from insects and disease. And he's talking here about all of your monies, all of your investments, all your bank accounts. Um, <clears throat> I will guard them from insects and disease. Your grapes will not fall from the vine before they are ripe, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Then all nations will call you blessed, for your land will be such a delight, says the Lord of heaven's armies. So my purpose, and I believe that you're with me on this, and Joe certainly is because we've always done this, is that we bring our offering before the Lord in the morning whenever we're going to church or something like that, or ever we're uh, giving it to a ministry or anything, and we hold it up for the Lord because we are presenting it to the Lord. You're not giving it to the church. It, it will be used in the church, but you put it where the Lord tells you to put it. But we're going to hold this offering up before the Lord, and we're going to ask you, Lord, Lord, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus, and we lift up to you these these tithes and offerings that the people have brought to you, Lord. We ask you to bless them. 
We ask you to multiply them in everything they set their hand to, Lord, that their resources will increase more and more so that they will have more than enough for themselves, but also more than enough to sow into the kingdom of heaven and, and your work, Lord. So in Jesus' name, we thank you and bless the people as they have given. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. We may have to have her do a service, right? <laughs> Amen. That was good. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And again, it's all about what the Lord wants. Amen. What the Lord wants is what we will we will do. We do our best to be obedient to do it. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Well, praise God. Let's get started with this thing. I can getting quicker with this little mouse. I'm trying to at least. Sorry. Awkward silence. Awkward silence. <laughs> All right. Here we go. All right. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Are you guys ready for this one? Yes. Amen. No. no. <laughs> Praise God. Well, first of all, let me just say that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Uh, that this is something we all have to learn to do, right? And, um, you know, and I just want to encourage you, you know, you, we hear this kind of stuff. and we, we hear messages that we've heard a lot about. And uh, we kind of just kind of say, oh, I, I've heard about this. I know about this. And, and uh, you kind of just unplug. You know what I mean by that? You just kind of unplug. And uh, the truth of the matter is, is that I can't give you revelation. No matter, I, can, I do everything I can to prepare and to, and to bring the word of God to you. But in reality, I can't do anything to you. I, I can't make you get it. I can't make you believe it. I can't make you do anything. Amen. But it's the Holy Spirit is the one who's going to reveal things to you. The Holy Spirit's the one that's going to bring the Word of God to life to you. So you may hear me talking up here and, and talking about these things, but pay attention on the inside. What is the Holy Spirit saying to you? Sometimes, he'll, like, he'll, something I'll say, he'll, like, bring it up to you. It's like a hit a button, like a, like a buzzer button on the inside of you. It just pops up inside of you. Grab hold of that. Grab hold of that and think about what he's showing you. Because he's, when he does that, that's a leading. He's trying to lead you into something that, to reveal to you. And so a lot of times we can ignore that and, uh, and we miss out on what the Holy Spirit has for us. So even if, it has to, even if you have to unplug from what I'm saying or the sermon a little bit, go ahead and do that. And I'm a minister. I, I've been to many services where I've been in and the minister is speaking and, and he said something that just went off on the inside of me. And so I kind of had to unplug from what he was saying, and I had to kind of step to the side, I guess you could call it that way, and I had to think about this thing that he was saying, and the Holy Spirit brought revelation to me. And so uh, if you have to do that, do that, amen? So, because um, what's most important here is that you get what the Holy Spirit wants you to get. That is the most important thing. And anything else we do here today, amen, is that you get the knowledge, you get the revelation that God wants you to get. Hallelujah. Because, because his revelations bring freedom. His revelations bring liberty from the things that we're struggling with and things that we battle with. Amen. So we want to, we always want to be aware of what he is, he is poking, kind of poking on the inside of us. I guess you could say it that way too. All right. So, amen. So probably here. So probably one of the greatest things, probably one of the hardest things that we as Christians have to learn is we have to learn to watch what we say. Amen. We have to learn how to say the right thing. You know, and many of us, uh, um, you know, I can't, and I'm sure you've ran into this too, and again, no condemnation, but there's been a lot of people that have come for prayer and have come to ask God for things, and, uh, and so we, we hook up with them in faith, right? We hook up with them and we pray with them and say, all right, you know what? We're believing God for a change. We're believing God for something different. Uh, and, and then not even a minute after prayer, they're talking defeat. They're, they're talking the problem. They're saying, you know, they're, it's like you, you just had prayed nothing. And so that is really how you defeat yourself 
with your own words. You, you have, and again, no condemnation, because the minute after they do that, there I am, doing the same thing. Right? So we all have to learn how to do this. This is something, I don't care if you've been a minister for 80 years or 60 years, or you've been a Christian for 80 years, we all have to learn that we have to watch what comes out of our mouth and watch what we say. Because really, in the end of things, when it comes to the things of God, when it comes to walking in faith and living by faith, that it is we are defeated by what we say, or we are going to walk in victory by what we say. So we get to make the choice there of how, of what direction we're going to go in. And so today we're going to cover this. We're going to talk a little about this. And, uh, and we just want to show that your words carry importance. What you say carries weight. It's not empty words, right? We can speak empty words, but what you say, what you believe about a certain thing will actually, it actually carries a spiritual weight, it carries a spiritual weight. And you may be asking about, well, what does that mean? So we're going to talk about all that today. We're going to get into it. And uh, when we, first of all, we're just going to talk about what does the Bible say about the importance of what we say? What does it say? All right. And then we're going to talk about how the Word of God works. Because when we understand how the Word of God works, we will, be, we will understand why it's so important to say the right thing. It was to speak rightly when we understand what's going on. All right. And then when we understand what's going on, we understand how the word of God works. Then we're going to talk a little bit about how to cooperate with the word of God, how we cooperate, because this is really what this is all about. This is all about cooperating with God so he can produce in your life what he wants to produce in your life. Amen. And so that's really what the core issue we're going to get at today. Hopefully plant some seeds and, uh, and get some wrong thinking squared away. So, all right? so first of all, we'll talk about what is the Word of God say about the importance of our words. Proverbs 18.21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. Amen. So what does that mean? That means that we are going to eat the fruit of what we say, of what we talk about, what we speak over our lives, or what we speak over situations, whether it be death or life, we are going to eat the fruit of those words. And uh, probably the, Joe's famous quote, he always says it. He says, you know, you're going to have what you say. You're going to have what you say. Amen. That's his, that's his token phrase. <laughs> hey. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. Amen. So what you say is what you get. Amen. So, and that's absolutely true. And that's scriptural right here. It's death and life and the power of the tongue. Also here in James 3, verse 3 through 4, it says, Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Look, look, uh, verse 4, look also at ships. Although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Now we take it this, we're talking about steering, right? Put a bits in a, in a horse's mouth so you can steer them. The rudder on a ship steers the ship, right? And so here in the next verse, verse 5, the Apostle James says, Even so the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. And so he's saying, he's saying you can steer your life by the things that you say. The things, the words that come out of your mouth, you can steer your life. Either you can steer it, it agrees with Proverbs 18, you can either steer it towards death or you can steer it towards life. Amen. So he's saying the same concept as is spoken in Proverbs 18. Also, Jesus here talks about this and again agrees with Proverbs 18 and Mark 11, verse 23. It says, For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Now, Jesus here is talking about a spiritual law. And this works both in the positive and the negative. And he's, notice here he says what you believe in your heart and what you speak with your mouth. What he says will be done. Right? He says, be, uh, whoever says this mountain and does not doubt in his heart but believes those things which he says will be done, he will have what he says. So again, your words are directing and dictating what comes into your life what comes into your life all right now <clears throat> notice here that he also there's two parts to this there's believing and saying believing and saying so we can offhandedly say something 
and there would be no weight to it because we don't have the belief factor in it. Amen. So we talked about this uh, a few months ago. That remember that little equation I gave you? It was uh, what was it? believing plus saying equals faith. Remember that believing plus saying equals faith. If you take out the saying out of that and just have believing, it doesn't equal faith. So you have to have the believing and the saying together. That equals faith. All right. And so we could say take the believing out and just have the saying, right? And that still doesn't equal faith. So we've got to have the two together, believing and saying. Amen. That's going to be important as we go on here. And we talk a lot about believing and saying, right? We, we were talking about that, about the blessing, believing or saying, and there's a reason for that. And we'll talk about that today here in just a second. All right, so believing and saying. All right. <clears throat> now, I, the reason we're talking about this is because uh, we have, myself included, uh, just even just recently, I found myself saying some wrong things about my business. You know, I, I was talking to my customers and, you know, customers ask, you know, what's going on? How's it going? And, you know, and I got to tell them, oh, yeah, you know, gas is up 100 percent. You know, my cool, my chemicals for pools, it's up 300 percent and uh, inflation's up 9, 10 percent. And then I was like, so I'm complaining. Right. I, I'm not speaking the truth, you know, and so. Right, right. And I'm believing what I'm saying. And, it, it's, and uh, so what I'm doing there is I'm setting myself up for failure. I am setting myself up for lack because I'm believing and I'm speaking. And the Lord of God, and the, Lord, the, the Lord God said, all right, wake up. You know, you're creating a condition that you're not going to enjoy later. Right. And they're going to come to me and ask what's going on. So I'm just trying to give you a little warning ahead of time. Start changing what you're saying. Watch what you're saying. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. So, and we all do that, right? I mean, I'm sure we've all been there and we all do that. Thank God for the Holy Spirit, right? He's looking out for you, right? To correct you, to help you get in the right path, stay in the path and don't waver off and just keep walking in blessing and goodness. Amen. Amen. All the days of your life, he will help us do that. If we will just listen and hearken to his words. Amen. 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 Praise God. All right. All right, so the final one here we want to make on this point, as far as the importance of what we say, is found in Hebrews 3, verse 1. It says, Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. That's a lot of things that uh, many Christians don't understand, is that Jesus Christ needs your words to perform his word in your life. He needs your words. Yeah. He, Jesus Christ, this is his job as the, as the high priest of our confession. That he is to bring to pass what we say. And if we are not saying anything, he has nothing to work with. And so we, he needs our words. He needs our faith-filled words so he can produce those words in our lives. Amen. To produce that blessing. That's why we're always saying, believe and speak the blessing over your life. Believe and speak the blessing over your finances, over your house, over everything that you own, everything that's in your sphere of influence. Believe and speak the blessing because now you're giving Jesus Christ the, the ammunition, if you will, to carry out what you have said. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, all right. So let's go ahead and take a look at, first of all, uh, next, at how the word of God works. How does this whole thing? So when we understand how the word of God works, this is all going to start to make sense. All right. So let's go ahead and let's look at John 1, verse 1 through 3. And it says, in the beginning was the word. And that's, of course, Jesus Christ, as he'll we'll see down here. And the word was with God, and the word was God. Now notice he's, he changed to he. That's Jesus. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. So everything that is created has been created through Jesus Christ. Nothing that was created was created without him. Amen. So he was involved in everything. Amen. So let's go back to the beginning. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 through 3, here it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters, Right, so let's stop right here. The Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Now, what is he doing right here? 
What is the Holy Spirit doing as he's hovering over the, over the waters? He's not doing anything. Right? Why isn't he not creating? Why is he not moving? Why is he not doing anything? Because he has not yet received the word of God. The word, as soon as God spoke, then God said, let there be light, and then there was light. So as soon as the word of God came, the Holy Spirit went into action. So the Holy Spirit cannot go into action without the word of God. The word of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they all work together and in tandem with each other. None of them can work independent of each other. And so we see that the Holy Spirit cannot move and will not move until the faith-filled words are spoken through the word, through the word, unless it came through the word, right? The, Jesus Christ is the word. The Father is the one who sends the word. The Holy Spirit is the one who performs the word. Amen. All right. So now we know how this all works out. Now look at this in Hebrews 11, verse 3. It says, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Now what's really cool about this is that the worlds were framed. The worlds were framed by the word of God. Now if we're believing God for a situation, and we're believing God for a change in a condition or a change in a whatever it is, that we know that we can frame that condition through the Word of God. Or we can say it this way, we can reframe that condition through the Word of God. The Word of God, the Word of God is what created all of creation. And it is also the Word of God that can change your situation. It's the Word of God that can change your condition. It's the Word of God that can set you free from whatever it is you're, you're bond, bound with. Because it's the same power and the same word. So we can frame, we can frame our success, we can frame our victory through the word of God. We can frame our liberty, we can frame our blessing, we can frame whatever it is through the word. Through the word. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, and so this is why we need to understand that the word, how the word works, so now we can begin to cooperate with it. Now we, now we can begin to step into the flow and we can begin to open up the door for God to come in and make a transformation and to make a change. Amen. So let's say I like my finances right here in this example. I'm saying, all right, I, I stop what I'm saying and I start saying the right thing. I start declaring my finances are blessed. My finances are blessed, and I believe that because that's the word of God. The word of God says, my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Also, I'm an inheritor of the blessing of Abraham. So I speak that, I believe it in my heart, and I speak it because it's the word of God. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit will not respond to anybody's words but God's word. And so if I'm speaking God's word over my finances, now I give Holy, the Holy Spirit open door to bless my finances that my finances can increase they can be abundant it's not because it's me he's doing it it's because of him who does it the one who framed the world is now framing my circumstance amen he's framing my condition to change it to good to change it to good hallelujah amen so so let's take this path here all right so how does this how does this word work all right so we have the word of god we hear it Right? We hear the word of God. We know the word of God is anointed. Right? It's full of the life and power of God. And so we hear the word of God coming in through our, whether we read it or whether we hear it or however we get, it comes into our senses. We hear that word. And then once we believe that word, we receive that word, it enters into our spirits. The word of God enters into our spirits. Jesus talks about being the bread of life. And he's the bread of life. What do you do with bread? You eat it. When you receive the bread, you eat it. It goes on the inside of you. And so the word of God goes on the inside of us. And we see that also in the parable of the sower. And so what happens now that we believe it, that that word is in our spirits, and then we speak that word out of our mouth. We speak that word. So the word of God is flowing and working through us. You see that? It's entered into us. And now when we speak it, now the God can work. And now God is working in that situation. 
So that's why I speak the word of God to sickness and disease. I speak the word of God to poverty and lack. I speak the word of God to whatever it is, you know, if I believe I'm cursed or whatever, I speak the blessing to that because I am not of the curse. God has blessed me. And so I cannot, I refuse to partake of the curse. I refuse to speak the curse. I speak blessing. Amen. We talked about that last week. I don't want to get over into that. Amen. So this is actually how we are saved. Romans 10, verse 9 through 10 says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Now, I notice that there again, believe in, uh, if you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And if you confess with your mouth, amen. So you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth. The Holy Spirit went into action and created the new creation on the inside of you. You became a new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen. And so that is how the word works. So if we want the word to work in our life, we have to follow this pattern. Because this is the pattern that has been going since the, the beginning of creation. This is how God works. We saw God created it. But then we also look at the ministry of Jesus Christ. How did he, what did he do through his ministry? How did he perform miracles? What did he do? He spoke to things. He spoke to demons. He spoke to, right, he worked, he worked through the word. The word, the word, the word. He spoke to sicknesses and a disease, right? And he, they, they all left. Amen. 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 So, so I just want to take a last thing here. Well, I mean, almost the last thing. Is you want to clear up a misconception that we have amongst uh, the, the, especially us in the faith circles. Uh, we have this misconception that when we, spark, when, we, uh, when we start speaking to things, that we think it's our words that are actually going to change it. Do you know what I'm saying by that? Like, we think it's us. We are, so we are trying to work something. We are trying to do something. We are trying to force something by the words that we speak. And so you can, all, you can hear it in the tone of their voice, and they're like, uh, you know, be healed, you know, be healed. Do, you know, you're, you're, you're grunting, you're trying to do the work. You're trying to make it happen. And that is not what that we're supposed to do. That is, that is stepping out from the flow of the word, and that is you trying to do something yourself. And I know there's a lot of teaching that uh, our faith, that faith creates changes, that faith is powerful, and that faith does, uh, uh, you know, faith creates those things, that your faith creates those things. And that's true in a sense, but not true. And it's not right. So let me give you an example of what I'm trying to say. All right, let's say you're in a, in a room, right? And it's really hot inside this room. And you notice there is a nice, cool air outside, right? It's nice and cool outside. And so what do you do? You open up a window, right? You open up the window to allow that cool air from outside to give that cool air access to come in and reduce the temperature in that room, right? To, to make it cool it down so you can, you know, enjoy yourself, right? Here's the thing. Does, or here's the question. Does the opening of that window, does that actually, is that actually what causes the room to be cool? Just, just, the, just the act of opening the window, does that actually what causes the room to be cool? No. No. So what if it's the same temperature in the room and outside of the room? You open that window, there will be no change in the room, right? So opening the window itself is not actually what changes the room, right? And changes the condition in the room. So opening the window is tantamount to what we say and what we're speaking. Just speaking in itself does not change the condition. But our speaking, opens, you know, opening the window, allows access for the anointing and allows access for God to come into that situation Amen. and change the situation. Amen. So we have to make that distinction because I found myself, even here myself, uh, speaking to things and it's like I'm trying to do it. It's like that's how I used to, you know, with the name of Jesus. It's the same way. You, you, you're trying to force it. You're trying to make it happen. And it's like you're, you're working separate from God, but you're over here trying to force it. But that's not how it works. It won't work that way. So you have to have faith in the, the word of Jesus. Have the faith in the name of Jesus. Speak the name of Jesus. And then believe that Jesus is going to do what you just spoke. Amen. And this is actually found here in John 14, verse 13. 
And Jesus here is actually talking about using his name. It says, whatever you ask. Now, this word ask can also mean require or demand. So I like to read it this way. Whatever you require in my name, what? That I will do. That I will do. I will do. So when we speak to that devil in the name of Jesus, who's going to do it? Who's going to cause that devil to flee? Jesus. When you speak to sickness and disease in the name of Jesus, who's going to do it? Jesus. But you spoke the name of Jesus to open the window to give Jesus access to create a change in that situation. So our faith is in the name and not our faith in what we speak. Can you kind of see what I'm saying? I mean, okay. So it's a very slight. It's very slight. And it's so easy to get off. So I want to kind of make that distinction clear so that we are having faith in God and not in faith alone in what we say, right? So we are speaking to allow God access, allow God access. Amen. All right. Praise God. All right. So our words are either going to help us or they're going to defeat us. And so, like we said, we have two choices. Are we going to open the door for Jesus to work in our lives or are we going to open the door for the devil? When we speak death and destruction, we are actually, and we start complaining about things, we are actually giving access to the destroyer. So whatever way, there's only two ways that we speak. We can speak life and blessing and goodness, or we can speak death, darkness, and destruction. And when we speak death, darkness, and destruction, that's where you allow, you open that door, you open the wrong window, right? You're allowing access to the wrong person to come in and create the condition that you are speaking. And so we want to create the condition of blessing. Hallelujah. All right, I think you guys are getting it. All right, amen. All right, so this is a learning process. This is a learning process, all right? All right, and so the last point I want to make before we close up here is that uh, you know, we all have said some wrong things in our lives. You know, we all have said things that we wish we could take back, right? I mean, that's, that's a given. That's a given. And the devil would lo- like nothing better for us to put us in fear about some of the things that we've said in our past, right? And so the good news is, is that you can call your words null and void, null and void. So if you have said things over and over in your past, you know, because your words, again, they have spiritual weight, they have spiritual influence. If you have said those things, you can disassociate yourself from those words. You can, you can call those words null and void. Right? You can pull back your faith from those words. Remember, because it's the believing and the saying. But now that you've heard the truth and you know the truth, you can pull back your believing. Right? And so now those words have no weight. They have no, they have no spiritual influence on your life. They'll have no effect on you or your house or anything, your body or whatever you said, because now you've retracted. Amen. A lot of people call about, uh, say it like this, that they call a crop failure on those words. That's the same thing. Yeah, crop failure. You just call a crop failure on those. So the, the object here is not to get bound by this, all right? Because people can get uh, compulsive, obsessive about what they say, and they, get, and they take it too far, right? And so they, and they get into fear, and they find themselves in a, in a condemnation, and then you know, they find themselves policing other people about what they say. And so we don't want to do that, right? We just want to watch what we say, and if we do say the wrong thing, we can immediately stop, I say, all right, no, I, I call crop failure on those. Or, or I can say, you know, I, I call those words null and void in Jesus' name, that they have no power over me. And I just cast them off, right? And so we just let it loose. Amen. Just let it go and get it out of your, out of your life. Amen. All right. So now the last point I want to make. <laughs> all right. Even though now the last point is that when we speak the word of God in faith, it is not always instantaneous. It doesn't always happen right away, all right? And we, saw, we see this in the fig tree. Uh, and this is such a great example of how things work, how the word of God works. Mark eleven twenty. Now, gee, we all know this story that Jesus spoke to the fig tree. He cursed the fig tree. But the fig tree didn't change right away, right? It took at least a minimum of 24 hours before that t- tree dried up. Right? And so we know that if you know the custom that they were going into Jerusalem during one of the feasts and then they would come out of Jerusalem and then they would go back into Jerusalem every day. Right? They would come out to Bethany to spend the night and then the next day they would go in. And so what they were doing is that one morning 
they were going out into Jerusalem. Jesus saw the tree, cursed it, and then they came out of Jerusalem, passed by that tree again, and still saw no change. And so they went back in. And so the Bible doesn't say how many times on what day that they came out and they noticed that the fig tree was withered, but it was at least a minimum 24 hours. It could have been 48 hours. It could have been 72 hours, right? So it did not happen instantaneously. And we also know that it's the fig tree dried up from the roots. So it started in the realm not seen, not seen. So the words that you speak are begin in the realm not seen. And then it produces into the realm seen. So that's why we must hold fast to our confession. Here, Hebrews 10, verse 23, it says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. He who promised is faithful. God is faithful to produce his promises in your life. He is faithful to produce the things that you, if you speak his words, if you speak his life, if you speak his things, he is faithful to produce those things in your life. So we must hold fast. Keep believing, keep speaking. That's what that hold fast means. Keep believing, keep speaking, don't give up, don't quit, hold on to it, amen? Hold on to the word. Hold on, and all you can hold on, how long do I have to hold on? Until as long as it takes. That's what faith is. Faith never gives up. Faith never quits. Faith is fully persuaded that what God has promised, God is also able to perform. Amen. And so we guess that cannot be drawn to look at how things are. We must be drawn to look at the faithful one. The faithful one who promised to perform what he said he would perform in our lives. Amen. Amen. All right. Praise God. That's enough for today. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead. I hope you got a little something out of that. That was kind of short, but I just pray the Holy Spirit minister to you. Amen. And that you got something out of it. Amen. And uh, maybe you've noticed something like, you know, like myself, you've noticed you have to make some changes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your promises. We thank you for uh, helping us and instructing us in the way that we should go. And Lord, we just pray that your Holy Spirit would bring up to remembrance. Bring this up to us, Father, when uh, we are making that mistake. Show us in areas in our lives where we need to change. We need to change what we speak. We need to change what we think. We need to change what we believe. And so, Father, we just thank you for that, giving us light. Because, Father, we know that you want us to walk in victory. We know that you want to produce good things in our lives and that we must cooperate with you in order for you to produce those things. And so, Father, show us how to do that. Show us how to be better and get better and better and better and better at it. So, Father, we can live in the glory of your goodness. We can live in the manifestation of your promises where they just won't be a piece of uh, a promise on a piece of paper, but it'll be something that we actually experience and we live in our lives. And so, Father, we glorify you today. We honor you. We praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. Amen. You survived. (laughs) Amen.